Before I start with my prepared remarks, I'd like to uh, recognize Betty Yee. Yeah. What an incredible elected official. What courage. She's a hero. She is truly a hero. If more elected officials had the courage and the integrity of Betty Yee, America would be a much different and a much better place. Watch Betty. She's going to be going places. There's few like her. She's a real treasure. Thank you, Betty. Sixteen years ago, sixteen years ago, the voters of California passed Proposition 215, and our community started its long march out of the shadows and into the light. We relied on democracy and the rule of law and the support of our fellow citizens. And with extraordinary courage, the first pioneers of this movement shed the protection of anonymity, took off the cloak of secrecy, stepped out of their comfort zone, and showed the whole world the true meaning of compassion. Yes, we did. Yeah. At great risk to themselves and to their families, people like Dennis Perron and Molly Fry and Valerie Corral and patients like Elvie Musica made it possible for the first time in modern history for medical cannabis patients to get their medicine, to get the access to the medicine that they need safely and affordably in an environment of care and respect and kindness. It was not easy then, it's not easy now, it's never been easy. It's never been easy. Ever since we passed Prop 215, we've been threatened, and we've been slandered, and we've been raided and prosecuted, and in too many cases thrown into the darkness of prison. Indeed, the law has been evaded and frustrated by the very people that we look to to enforce our laws. But we have persevered. We persevered through the Clinton administration, and we persevered through the Bush administration, two terms. And I'm here to tell the world today, we will persevere through the Obama administration. Yeah! Too. We will persevere. We will persevere. We will persevere with the same determination, with the same compassion, and with the same courage that's gotten us this far. 1600 years, 16, 16, it seems like 1600, right? Wow, 1600 years ago, 16 years ago, there were a few hundred medical cannabis patients. And there were just a few, too few, medical cannabis dispensaries to serve them. Now, there are thousands of patients. There are thousands of dispensaries. Uh, we have created so much, so many good things. Patients have a safe place to access the medicine they need and very often the medicine that they get is laboratory tested. We've created tens of thousands of well-paying jobs and hundreds of millions of dollars of tax revenue for our communities. We've removed billions of dollars from the underground economy. We've reduced the burden on law enforcement and we have made our communities safer. And yet, and yet, we see a renewed attack by the federal government, a coordinated multi-agency attack by the Treasury Department and the IRS and the BATF and the so-called Department of Justice, an attack so large and so well publicized that our president must have known about it must have heard about it. Our president, our president who promised to protect us during the campaign, our president whose Justice Department initially promised to respect state medical cannabis laws and then when states actually had the audacity to take them up on that promise, responded with this campaign. They changed their mind and responded with this campaign to close down state regulation. I want to know, where are you, Mr. President? Why are you allowing this travesty to unfold? 
Why have you abandoned the thousands of suffering patients? Why have you abandoned the people who rely on cannabis for their quality of life, or in some cases rely on cannabis for life itself? What will you say, Mr. President? What will you say to the leukemia patients? What will you say to the cancer patients? What will you say to those who are going blind and wasting away when your Justice Department throws them to the wolves? When your U.S. attorneys destroy safe access and drive seriously ill patients back into the hands of the criminal market? Think about that. Think about it. Think about what you'll say, Mr. President. But don't think too long, because if you do, it may be too late for many of us. And to the U.S. attorneys, to the DEA, to the drug czar, we say this. Our road, our road may be long, and it is assuredly bumpy, but we know that the road bends in our direction. We know that it is getting shorter as more of us march upon it every day. And we know that the road inevitably will end at the destination we have in mind. So we call on you, U.S. attorneys, to do the decent thing and desist from this campaign of terror and intimidation. Surrender this campaign. Eighty percent of Americans support medical cannabis. It has been endorsed by the American College of Physicians and by the California Medical Association. The NAACP thinks that we should change the laws and for the first time the Gallup poll shows a majority of Americans agree with that. We gained four percent in that poll in just six months and, and we have never gone backwards in the entire history of the poll. So the writing uh, is on the wall. The outcome is clear. The laws are going to change. The only question is how many more will suffer before decency prevails? How many more patients will go without the medicine they need? How many more gentle, compassionate souls will be tossed into the darkness of prison? How many more jobs will be destroyed and how much tax revenue will be eliminated from our communities that need it so badly? We want to know, Mr. Holder, we want to know, U.S. attorneys, how many more need to suffer before you do the decent thing and surrender this campaign of terror and intimidation? Yay! For one thing is certain and one thing is sure, we have come too far and sacrificed too much to go backwards now. Sixteen years ago, we began our long march. We shed off anonymity and secrecy, and we put compassion into action. We stepped out of the shadows. We stepped into the light. We have tasted freedom. We have earned our freedom, and we're not going back. We're never going back. We're never going back into the shadows again. We have stepped into the light, and in the light we shall remain. Yeah.